Swimmy is a computer program that uh, simulates the neural circuit that produces a side-to-side -side tail flapping movement of a virtual fish. It's got a very limited number of neurons, an even smaller number of which are involved in producing these swimming movements. And the student's task is to try to figure out which of Swimmy's neurons are involved in swimming, and then to figure out how those neurons are interconnected and how they produce the swimming movements. In doing this, they are essentially repeating in a period of about three weeks of lab sessions, work that took about 50 years for real scientists to do, but because they have none of the technical problems of the experiments and none of the technical problems of maintaining animals and so on and so forth, they can do it much more rapidly, but they have to go through the same thinking processes that the real scientists did. There are, in fact, um, 26 neurons in Swimmy. Um, eight of them, I believe, are devoted to swimming. And then there are a bunch of dummy neurons that just kind of do funny things that have nothing to do with swimming. And the first thing they have to do is to figure out which ones are the dummies and which ones are the real ones. And they do this basically by looking to see which neurons do something more or less in sync with Swimmy's uh, movements. We tell them which the motor neurons are. So that, that gives them a start, and then they look for other things that are correlated with the activities of the motor neurons. If they were looking at the neurons of a real fish, or a real anything, because the neurons of all kinds of animals look, the electro electrical activity of them looks pretty much the same, um, this, what they see here is indistinguishable. We have had neurophysiologists who use Swimmy, um, we play with it for fun, and when they go away from doing so, they feel like they've been doing a real experiment. Most lab exercises are pretty cut and dried, and we wanted something where they really have to solve a reasonably hard problem. These students have all read about rhythmic motion, like walking, swimming, flying, in their various neuroscience courses, and so they've had a little bit of background, and so that seemed like a good problem. And also, people have thought about how those movements are produced at a detailed neural level a lot and worked it out, and so it was a good, we, we knew what the real answers were. Um, and so it seemed like a good problem to do this with. Any kind of behavior or neural activity where neuroscientists have an idea about how it might be done, whether they're right or not, doesn't really matter, one can program a computer to do it, and one can there, and then create a virtual animal that does it that way, and one can then set the students to try and to figure out how that animal does it. Of course, and we know the answer because we, we generated it. So there's a right answer and a wrong answer. And what they can also do is they can compare that animal that's in the computer, um, the virtual animal, with what real animals do. So you can, for example, set them to reading the literature on how real animals do this task and ask them, does the one on the computer, is it the same or is it a mutant? Does it do things in a different way? And that's another, there's all kinds of exercises that one can develop using these virtual, virtual animals. We're asking these students to cover 50 years of research in three weeks. It, of course, helps that Swimmy only has 26 neurons and so on. Nevertheless, um, you couldn't attack a problem anything like this complicated with a real animal.